Uh, I had some things on pretrial. TC's not here though, so I guess we'll I'll deal with that later. Did anybody call him? Um, oh. I talked to Maisha about that. We talked about that on the way here too. So don't call her Ginger. That's weird. Um, you didn't even mention that you had to prove that it caused another person to win, which is. Oh, yeah. I mean, it didn't end up being. Well, it didn't really end up being argued, I guess, in the end, even though. It was part of your guys' theme, and I liked it, but by the end, you weren't really arguing that there was no consequence, because your own witness said there was, which, you know, whatever, you're doing a, a quick case here. Um, yeah, you got to make sure you get the burden right, and I just thought that you, you talked, like, too formally. Like, it wasn't very charismatic. I think, excuse me. I would practice being a little less formal. Is I guess the best way I would put it. Being a little more conversational, I guess would be the other way. Okay. Um, defense opening, and this is a comment I guess back to the plaintiff opening too, is that the defense opening had great labels. The one I wrote down was architect of conspiracy, which they said, they're, they, they told you that you're trying to prove he's a, the architect of a conspiracy. So they kind of gave you a great label to use against them because architect of a conspiracy sounds awesome. really nefarious. Is the yeah. word I use. Yeah. It sounds like really evil. And I mean, there, there are other ways to say, you know, rigged an election. We talked about it at lunch. But the defense opening had great labels. I think you guys need to take some of those labels. Okay. Um, is it Dan? Ian. Ian. Sorry, Ian. bad handwriting. Uh, Ian. <laughs> Or Ian, where's okay? Just, just slow down a little bit. Yeah. Because uh, you you paused appropriately, but when you were talking fast and then you would like pause for a second, yeah. it wasn't very fluid. So uh, slow it down, try to smooth it out, and I think you pretty much stood in one place. Yeah. Which I guess I don't blame you for, because this well is really bad. But mm -hmm. you should try and move still. There's a lot of lateral space, I guess. That's right. Mm -hmm. Openings. Dan. Um. I mean, as far as the plaintiff opening, I, I told you I don't like your theme. Um, uh, suppression, education requirements, I thought that was solid um, as far as kind of painting the defendant in a bad way. Um, but speak up, uh, I thought you used a little too much like language in your opening. Like, you got to dumb it down for the jury, okay. especially in the opening, make it real simple. Um, and use use some of the phrases like the evidence will sh you know show you will learn um, you will hear today those types of phrases really are good for opening and it makes you uh, a little less argumentative. I thought the defense's theme was solid. No connection, no consequence. The only thing is, is no consequence for me has a connotation like you got away with something. Um, you know, it's like you didn't face the consequences for what happened, but. Um, as far as piggybacking off what Pat said, using some of the things that they said against him, he said something like uh, the defendant started calling out Elizabeth and systematically pointing out her flaws. It kind of like, to me, shows that he was willing to go the distance to win this election and almost do almost anything. And I thought on the flip side of that, it kind of hurts your client just kind of showing that he's kind of an animal to try to win this election. Um, you said he got active and assertive. Um, you could use those things in your to start your closing. You heard that he got active, he got assertive. You know, just use those, those words against him. And as far as the defense goes, I think you got to focus a little more on the burden. Um, talk a little bit more about the burden. I thought you had a little bit of extra time to do that. Um, and then you yeah, move around a little bit more. Adam, I think we covered most of most of mine, we did talk about the theme fairly extensively at lunch. I think, okay. you know, when you, when you do the stolen right to vote, again, kind of making a cash or writing check that you can't really cash on that one. Um, Dylan, I thought you did a very good job uh, establishing what suppression was and unpacking what intent meant in this. So I think those are very strong points uh, to consider. Why aren't we doing first names as far as all of your witnesses? <laughs> we got a lot of Mr. Sandbergs and Maybe yeah. we just we refer to that when we're like just in practice. So oh, okay. maybe we just need to yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so Same first anything else? In practice.
Nope, I get kind of a general one for all of the attorneys, and that's I, I'm a big proponent of the, the bigger hand motions. A lot of you guys do a lot of little hand talking, particularly when judges are writing comments. The little ones are kind of distracting, so go big or go home on that. Witnesses, too. Um, this says to me that I'm equivocating. This says I'm making a point. So if your hands are up, it's please believe me, please believe me, please believe me, whereas this one says I'm making a point. I'm trying to establish something. So it's, it's just another little body language thing that says I'm really selling this. The more conviction you guys have in this one, um, the better off you're going to be. It is kind of a wishy-washy case in, in some respects, so the less equivocating you can do, the better. Um, so much of this, because there's been so little time to really perfect some of this, is just in how you sell it. So the bigger you can sell it, the more body language things you can do to sell it, the better off you're going to be. So that you guys have ample time to get your table set up before we start our last trial, I'm going to limit everybody to one, one minute per, per segment. So I'm going to start with myself. It's uh, 4 minutes and 35 seconds. Um, Jill, you, nice job on the hearsay objection. It wasn't uh, for the truth of the matter. Um, not just Jill, but I heard this uh, from both you and TC. Please work together on uh, moves to admit. Moves to admit. You just need absolute credibility because you'll be going against four-year veterans who say moves to admit. You'll go against some people who say moves into evidence. Uh, but Did I say you said moves into evidence, like it's a place. Evidence is not a place. It's a motion to admit. Um, nice start on cross. Uh, your first point was you're not a trained vo voice expert. That was a very good place to start. It was strong. Katie is a witness. I thought, as usual, you're likable, you're lovable. The, you know, the, the mom thing you had down pat. Uh, I just, uh, it, it was very well done. I, I don't think parking is crazy is your best, most persuasive way to say it. I think you uh, need to talk about parking in objective terms, and crazy is not objective. What would you have me say? Um, there was no free parking. I had to walk this uh, extraordinary distance. I had on heels. Those heels were killing me so bad, I gave serious consideration to not even. Yeah. Yeah, we're low like, income and we got paid. To vote. Yeah, right. This was an unconstitutional poll. Yeah, <laughs> stop. You didn't go there. Uh, <laughs> hey, and I just on a, on the LOL. Thank you so much for not blaming the coach. Love you, girl. <laughs> that was a great line. <laughs> great answer to the final question. I don't know that. He tried to make you speculate. Don't end the question with speculation. And I was just so proud of you. Is my minute up? Okay, I'm, I'm done. Go ahead, Pat. Um, I'm going to... Okay. Jillian, one thing that you said uh, during the hearsay argument was we're not using it for the truth. Try to get in the habit of saying we're not using it to prove the truth. And I would also say why you're not using it to prove the truth, which in this case is we only care that the statement was made. We don't care if it was true. We don't care if it was accurate. We care that it was made. Yeah, Stevenson got some good language that you can use for that. Your direct had a lot of vague questions like, what else happened during the campaign? And what else happened that day? That was my bad. Yeah. Um, I know your direct better, I guess. Um, Katie, can you urge? Oh, um, you didn't have a whole lot of character that I that I know you're capable of. So put some work into that. For the cross, know exactly what you will and won't say about the voice ID. You kind of. I think you were more evasive than you needed to be, and I think you could have said something more concise. He's like. You know, are you a voc expert on vocal patterns and stuff and all that? And you kind of kept going back to, um, you know, no, I heard what I saw. I think you could even maybe say a little bit, or I know what I heard. He, he, but, but what I mean is he asked you a question. I'm trying to think of what it was. Um, you think I jumped the gun on giving about, the answer, kind of? It was like, something like, you can't say definitively that it was that person. What I would say is, I know it was definitively that voice, no. if you can say that. That's the kind of answer well, I guess, that. I, like in my affidavit, like that. yeah, that it's a definitively that person because I called the number and like, I well, guess that's what from my perspective it is that person. Well, then say that. Okay. My my overwhelming point is know what you will say and know okay. what you won't say okay. and be confident with it. And I, if it's if it's I know definitively it was the same voice, then say that. Don't yeah. dance around it because you're not sure what you can say. Okay, that's two minutes. I totally thought. I know what I heard. I know what I heard. I, mm -hmm. I, I heard a guy sure. who. Um, I had a, a mentally impaired witness who was first on the scene, 
And that's all he could keep going back to. I know what I heard. I know what I heard. That's all he had. That's what I heard. And what you are the expert on what you heard. And so I, I was fine. Hey, well, can I have a little time on the cross because I didn't give MSU anything there? Go ahead. Give MSU something. Uh, who crossed uh, white? Jordan. At a certain point, just move on. Okay. The, you had that question that got objected to. You said uh, over and over again, you asked the same question. She kept giving evasive answers. At a certain point, just move on. You made your point. Yeah, I've asked the question that you heard it. Yeah. yeah. So right. I would get into that mindset. If, you, if she says yes, nothing magical happens. The jury knows what you're trying to say. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, I'm going to disagree with what Professor Leapard said. said that whole part about not being a voice expert, I think that's weak. Mm -hmm. I, okay, I, I disagree I, with you on I, I think a, I think a lay I think a lay person is quite capable of knowing another voice when they hear heard it before. That's my opinion. Uh, it's all he's got. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, as far as the direct goes, uh, it sounded a little rehearsed to me. Um, <laughs> what, uh, Jill said, "Thank you for the compliment." <laughs> well, it, no, it, 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 it did sound a little rehearsed as far as Katie goes because you were you're. Your answers are so fast, and then at one point you rattled off a phone number off the top of your head really quickly, and I was just thinking like, who remembers random phone numbers? Oh, she was like looking that? at the document. Right, I didn't. Oh, I was like, I don't, I don't even know the phone number. I, 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 I had, I had, I, like, I, I did that though. I, I mean, I had wrote that down. Yeah. I was just like, who remembers phone numbers? Because you just rattled it off so quick. Um, I thought your character came out a little bit better on the cross because you got. You, you kind of had a bit of an attitude with the guy who was crossing you. Oh. And I was just thinking, like, oh, you should just be like this on direct. So it seems a little more consistent because it seemed like you changed. Because you were very abrasive on the cross, which I thought was good. I was just thinking that, oh, that's that's the character you need to play. Like, the the pissed off person who couldn't vote. You know, I well, thought... That's kind of the plan. Right, I was just thinking, because that's how you came across on the... Uh, I mean, came across on the cross exam, but I just didn't really get that from the direct. It seemed like... You were really trying to help the plaintiff, but if you come off like this person who's just upset because you had to jump through audience hoops just to try to vote mm -hmm. on the direct, and you you know just it came out across, but it didn't come out of direct. Okay. Um, and then uh, yeah, that's it. That's up. That's okay. Like, Adam. I told I told uh, yeah. Jordan. I think your character's a fifty-fifty ball too. I um, pick one either go with the likable mom or and I, I think I mentioned that to you earlier. Mm -hmm. You definitely stiffened up quite a bit as far as body language goes on the cross. Um, I personally think the relatable one's the way to go to make you get defensive with white right. bias. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I stick with the relatable one only because it, it comes off so very well on the direct. Okay. Um, let's see. You guys got into a little bit of a rush, both of you, toward the end, and that's kind of where it sounded scripted, like you were flying, there was no pause between question and answer, okay. so that's a little thing. Um, I'll deal with you later. Hey. So we're about to go to the second direct, which is Sandberg, TC. I was surprised to hear you move into evidence. Um, the language this constitutes here stay is not going to convince anybody uh, that this is a, a 10 they want to award. Um, you should, uh, you should, um, Anthony, I thought your backstory was not developed at the outset. As you have so much persona as time went on, you did develop a, a persona, but at the outset it wasn't. And whatever persona you developed, how likable it was, once you start uh, dropping pins and, de and uh, denigrating uh, one third of the American auto industry in Ohio, I don't think that's gonna work for you. No, that's not, that's not a bad thing in Ohio, it's only Michigan. I think there are a lot of people putting together cars in Ohio. And I just don't uh, think... Yeah, most of them are Hondas, Nissans, Toyotas. <laughs> are we really going to argue about this right now? Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you know, your risk. Your risk. Right. Your risk. You're the car guy, not me. Go. Um, yeah, the TC, the direct, the direct needs to be refined. And I guess we can talk about that a little bit more later because I am a strict time limit, I guess. You know. um, yeah, there, for both sides or I guess especially you guys, because it's going to count in a week, um, you got to be really careful with these witnesses and what they say. And this is specifically objections that should have come from them, but I suspect that they're going to have to come from you in this trial now, because, you know, like Sandberg and, and White really, too, are saying what voters will and won't do, what they think, what will affect what they do. You have to enforce very strictly what these witnesses can talk about, because for some of these witnesses, that's all they do is talk about how certain things will affect voter turnout. And these are a reporter and someone who works at a casino making these statements. 
the cross was pretty long, and I thought it lacked direction. I thought it got off of who did the cross. So no, I thought it got off of the, the points that you had in your theme. And I think the way you can get back to it is when you're talking to Sandberg is these things happen. Did uh, you know these intimidation tactics, whatever? These happen. This flyer was disseminated. Is there any evidence that links it to Max Heisman? No. Is there any evidence that links this directly to Max Heisman? No. Those are the kind of questions that should that should uh, be in your cross because that helps your you meet your burden, which is to show that he had no connection to these tactics. Uh, Anthony, you were great. I would. Well, at one point I said play up the storytelling kind of aspect to it, but then I thought at one point you overdid it, oh. and it was really weird when after five minutes you said the Ford Fusion. No, it was really was funny, but action, not really in a good way. Fair. It, was, it was like struggling to find it, struggling to find it, said the wrong Ford, meant to say Pinto, and then... Pinto would have worked. See, okay, but then afterwards I came up with two better ones. Or Pinto. Unsliced bread and the Black Plague. No, I want to say that. <laughs> okay, uh, it is uh, it is two forty one. How are you coming on ballots? I did I Is is all the ballots I'm, over here I'm done? I'm them out right now. Okay, all right. How many do you need? Because I did seven, but I don't really know. How many. Oh, yes. No, Mr. Prosecutor for Washington uh, County. Keep those kids in line. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Dale, anything quickly? Um, as far as the Mayan calendar, sure. Before we move on, how many ballots do you need? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Unless Paul comes back, if he does, that would be seven. Um, as far as the direct and the cross goes, I thought I thought TC, you got to be smoother on admitting the documents. Um, all the attorneys need to take uh, this evidence goes to, just take goes to out of your vocabulary when you're talking about what the evidence, it tends to show, it tends to prove, that's what you need to say. The evidence doesn't go anywhere, um, except to the bench, as someone would say. But uh, um, this guy, this to me, as far as the defense goes, this guy's not an expert, and they never admitted him as an expert. And a lot of the stuff he's testifying as far as like more registered voters and more votes and what that would do, um, regardless if it's public record or not, you're not qualified to testify about it unless they admit you as an expert. And I thought that the defense should have did a little bit better job of making sure that, this is like Bassett, you have to be very, yeah, you have to be very careful of what he's talking about because a better attorney is going to object and say you need to lay the foundation for that and that takes up time that you don't have. Um, as far as your po your posture changes a lot from the direct to cross, you kind of, you crossed your legs, you sat back, you took put the pen <coughs> in your hand, you were ticking the pen like you were very comfortable. Um, you know, you got to be a little bit more careful with that. And a, a lot of, one thing that a lot of witnesses do on cross is the attorney will ask a bad question. Witnesses get so excited to make that attorney look bad. I think the best way to make an attorney look bad is instead of correcting them, say no, that's not right. Or just say no. And just, just say no sometimes. Just say no. And then say you don't have to fight with everything that the attorney messes up on. Because if the attorney messes up, let him deal with it. Just say no. Um, that's it. And I didn't know about the Ford Fusion thing. It was just awkward, so it was funny. Yeah, but, it was real awkward. <laughs> I was like, oh. It came out of my mouth and I felt awkward. So I did my taxes while we were waiting for you to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that go? I got a refund. I was yeah. like, yeah, so then you're like Ford what? Fusion. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm on trial. <laughs> Um, Adam, anything? Uh, a couple of quick things. Uh, I love the claim to the crowd line. I think we really ought to play that one up because it does make it look really sleazy in general. So I, I think that's a good angle that you know comes down here and, and, and slums it. But the rest of the time, he's making different points to different people. Um, I didn't like the line about him controlling the polling place. One, I don't think you know that. Yep, it's direct. Oh, I, I, I know it's in there, but I think it's it's something that you can probably get an expert kind of objection to. So just because it's in there doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to fly. Um, the line on direct, the campaign of inevitability, um, 
secure this paper, man. Sell that like it's a headline. You know? Okay. I don't, I don't even care if you put a voice on it, just boom it out there like, you know, the campaign is going to have to build whatever. You got it. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, PC, I thought you picked up steam, but the, the beginning was definitely a little choppy. Mm -hmm. So I, that'll probably come off with, you know, a few more runs. Um, I think you know that you'll probably lose any kind of Toma objection on that. I thought it was a good flow break on the hearsay objection, but you're probably not going to win that. I think you know that. But, um, and then we talked about the 607, 608 stuff and, and kind of how to rephrase some of that, I think, to get that in. So, um, that's it. I am going to skip the witness who was a stand-in and move directly to the character of Neil. Um, Ian? Yeah. Uh, good morning, who? Did you say nation? Did you really say nation? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Have you ever seen the Colbert Report? No, uh, she hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't stay up that late. Thank you. Um, I wouldn't start with that. Um, I, I I love the. I love the mayor's demeanor. You know, I, I read this case and I thought, oh, who can play this? And then my team has very strong op uh, opinions about the, um, the the mayor, and I love the mayor. And he was a human being that wanted to come in public and say, I love the mayor. I'm not sure how it helps your defense abilities, but anyway, I, I just, as I would have structured that direct, that wouldn't have been something I'd have included. Uh, the flow of the direct, people have said before, is unclear, so let me stop repeating stuff that uh, has been said. Go ahead, Pat. Um, in the beginning of their direct, uh, I looked at Jillian at the time because I thought she was directing him, and she got a undeserved <laughs> look. But <laughs> the witness said, straight up, Tom Lyon changed the location of the polling center, which isn't true, and stems from a conversation with someone that he had. So even if someone had told him it, it would have been hearsay. So he said something that's not accurate, and if it, even if it was accurate, it would be hearsay. And there was no objection, and there should have been an objection. And it kind of came out on cross again. You actually got him to say, well, no, really, I didn't know that. But that's an objection. If, there, if, if he's saying something you learned from a phone conversation, then you need to know that that's from a phone conversation so you can keep it out. Um, I think he said a lot of, the witness said a lot of, well, I figured that voters, blah, blah, oh, yeah. blah, <laughs> or I think this. Yeah, and anytime yeah. they say, I think, figure, I, I figure, figure, or yeah. you know, something that's like, this is common sense. It's not common sense. It's an expert opinion that he has no license to make. Okay, I need to go back one comment because I just had a question. You said that um, because he didn't, he didn't say, like, I was told that Tom Lyon did this or whatever. Do you object to, like, lack of foundation? We don't know how he knows that, and then when they say I was told, then object to hearsay, or do you just straight up object to I mean, hearsay? you can object to speculation and say, we have no foundation for how we would know that. And then the foundation for how we would know that, okay, well, that's hearsay then. So, yeah. I mean, the way they respond to that objection is by causing another one. I mean, right. there's, a, there's a couple no, different I'm ways. No, I'm saying like the way it. to handle it, you object to lack of foundation first. <coughs> I would object to speculation. Speculation. He okay. doesn't have personal knowledge of who made the decision to move the polling place. And then they have to show you how he does have that knowledge. Which of course they, he doesn't. Right. Okay. Um, the witness Ben. I mean, you, you wrote a. We were talking about writing checks earlier. You wrote a pretty big check with the uh, the Colbert stuff at the beginning, but then it didn't really come through. Yeah. And you even said French fries when you had an opportunity to say like freedom fries or something that would have fit with it, but it just it, it didn't really come through. But it was. It was, uh, I, I, I was excited at the beginning, and then I, you know, that's kind of where I'm coming from, is that it didn't come through and I was a little disappointed. Um, TC, look at the judge sometimes during cross. Dan? To emphasize a point. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the direct goes, I, I wrote, you're biased uh, off the get-go. You say something like, cars circling the parking lot is suspect. Um, that didn't seem suspect to me at all. I thought that, that threw me off. I thought you had a good answer on Cross about the complete disgrace. Uh, TC, I had used the room. Um, you said something like, uh, reason some people hate the government, some sleazy murder charges. I was like, uh, where's the objection for that? I thought that was improper character evidence. Um, TC, I thought that was an improper impeachment that you tried to do with them because you didn't read the line um, when the line was right there. I just 
I, I didn't know where you were going with that. And then when you do the flyer, I think you use the flyer, show the jury the flyer, point to the words on the flyer when you're talking about the flyer so the jury can see it and see exactly what you're talking about while you're crossing the witness. Um, that's it. Oh, no, the witness before. Um, sorry, Professor. Go for it. I just put, don't Five be minutes. so submissive, and then uh, the money was a great start. Livid, mad, upset, disappointed, you were hot, you know. Use just words, simple words for the jury. And then the no income, I thought play that up a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Right. TC, I thought it was the right impeachment. I, it needed to be cleaned up a little bit. I thought you could have asked one more question after that, because the whole line you premised that was that uh, everyone who wanted to got to vote, I pinned it back on that one and said, so if they didn't come back, not everyone who wanted to got to vote, did they? So outside of that, I think that's pretty much it. Professor, are you weighing in or are you going to wait until we're? Oh, I can wait. Okay. All right. Then um, that takes us to Davis. Um, Kevin, you don't have a sister named Chris, right? Christine? No. Okay. Great lawyer in uh, that area of the country that his name is Christine Piotrowski. That's not a common name for me. She's very well respected. Jordan, can, can you tell us? It's one of my pet peeves. Can means to be able. Your lawyer gets paid by the word, by the hour. You don't want to say stuff like that. Say what? Uh, can you tell us? It means oh. to be able. Yes, I can. Um, rephrase uh, missing info. So that your first question is uh, better stated. Good objection on speculation. Um, and that's all I have. Go ahead. Um, there was a lot of there was a lot of hearsay at the beginning of this, or at least it could have been objected to as. And I understand it's expert stuff, so he's kind of just talking about what he relied on. But a lot of it was also just him saying the exact thing the witness would say if they were sitting in the trial and testifying. So I think it was worth an objection because some judges aren't going to allow it. Some probably are, most are, I, I think. But it's a, a point you can make because you can cite the rule and you can cite case law that kind of goes in your favor, which even if you lose the objection helps you score points because there's a pretty good amount of case law and expert witnesses relaying the uh, foundations of their opinion. So whether or not it would have won, I don't know, but it's a point scoring objection okay. to make if you do it right. Um, there were some leading questions on direct. Uh, I can't remember which one. Um, for cross, it was, the, yeah, it was the argument over the 703, just because he's an expert doesn't make everything admissible. And I think there were some things that that should have been excluded. I think eventually with the, with the memo, you got to the right argument of showing that this memo lays this out and then it was carried out and that's why it's not being uh, used to prove the truth. But the first argument you made wasn't, when you change arguments, it kind of hurts your chances. Yeah. And, uh, the directing attorney argued it impressively. So I thought you were in the right on that objection, but he won it because he argued better. Uh, the witness was good. He sounded like a IRS auditor. <laughs> right. um, but I was kind of confused because he kind of torpedoed half your theme, which was there were no consequences, but then he's saying that the fraud changed the election. So. Yeah. Um, only note I have is, is use names. Use the first names. Humanize your client. Humanize your client. Don't say Heisman. Say Max. You know, humanize the people that are on your side. Because uh, you dehumanize them when you just say their last name. It makes mm -hmm. them not seem like real people. Yeah. Um, that's it. Do you have anything on Davis? Uh, just a couple. Um, Jordan, and I think we talked about this, but in general, um, it's a good thing to point out who hired Davis. It's a third party guy, so you've got to have that in there. Yes, it cuts both ways, but it lends credibility both ways, too. So I think having who hired him in there is something you need. Um, Jillian, I thought you could have significantly shortened up that cross just by listening to the direct where he gives you fraud away. That's the first question. So you're convinced fraud existed. Okay, move on. I don't need to cover all of the elements of fraud again. We've had four witnesses established. And then Maisha stands up in closing and says, as you heard from their witness, yeah. fraud existed. Yeah. They proved that part. Yep. Moving on. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, Good comment. Let's see. 
yeah, it was more along the lines of what did you need from him once you got past the fraud existing was, can you prove involvement or did it change the outcome? And once you get to change the outcomes, because you'll never get time to it and the longer you kind of chase that around in circles, the more points go down. Well, um, we've got two minutes left, so I'm going to give the rest of my comments and then I'm done. On the last witness, is that okay, Adam? Yeah, go for it. On the last witness, I just put, uh, Lauren, well done. Uh, Maisha, well stated, replied to the hearsay objection. Uh, this is a, a mayor who everybody wants to hate after reading the facts, but, but you pulled it off. You were likable. You had a nice denial. It was credible. You used words like reprehensible to mess with the American voter system. You threw in, I'm going <coughs> to be hard on crime and nice platforms. So that was great. On the closing, uh, we heard that it may change the election. Uh, we've talked about your overstatements. I'm not even going to go back and repeat that. Uh, and then I told you about my feelings about no connection, and I thought that could have been improved by saying no connection, no causation, no liability. All right, I'm done. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> the last witness. I don't know why, but I don't have a whole lot of notes here, so I'm not so going go to close my wheels. Maisha, though, you, yeah, you spent a lot of time on something that wasn't contested, and you have to just spend all your time connecting him to everything. And there's ways to do it. It's not necessarily directly out of a statement, but we talked about it. There's ways to do it. Uh, the one comment for the witness is you lie, just say it once. Say whatever you want to say, but don't say five different things and let her just keep saying over and over again that you lied. Because when eventually you say, like, yeah, I said something that wasn't the truth, not like anything that we liked about you was just like, I lied. Like I didn't know what to do. Well, whatever the reason is, just say I lied and get it over with. Because I don't think you really have anything else you can do. You're just kind of delaying the inevitable and letting her say that you're a liar a few more times. Closing, Maisha, I talked to you about labels. Disinformation should be propaganda or something like that. Um, he said <coughs> in their closing, it was an uncoordinated effort. Like... All these people were just rigging this election, not knowing that everybody else was rigging the election too, which you really didn't address head on. I mean, I would, I would pull out that specific line and say, he said it was an uncoordinated effort. Thank well, we you. have this memo that sets out A, B, C, and D. Then we have people on the ground who saw A, B, C, and D happen. So was this really uncoordinated or was it a strategy executed to perfection? Because their own witness said it caused them to win. So what do we think happened here? Dale, thank you, Pat. That um, as far as the last witness goes, you guys start, I, I, I guess the biggest part is listen, because you guys started the direct off talking about the memo that they tried to admit through the cross-examination of their witness before that didn't get let in, and then you guys started your direct, I know it's a planned direct, but you guys started your direct talking about that memo. What I would have did, my issue is I would have got that memo admitted on cross, because they opened the door on the direct when they shouldn't have talked about it at all, because I think the memo hurts you. Actually, um, I think I think I think with this witness, you should redirect um, because they're gonna get they're gonna get beat up pretty bad on cross. So redirect. Um, that's pretty much it. I just said, OMG, Maisha, handle him, please. Um, Adam. On that note. Wait, wait. I thought we were doing a closing. Oh, go okay. ahead, please. I'm so sorry, Daniel. Um, get your documents before you do your closing argument. Um, as far as the burden goes, I think dumb it down. Uh, I was going to say draw the court's attention to that uh, Keddy case law or whatever. And um, so clarify the burden and then dumb it down and say as long as we prove that that man sitting over there had something to do with election fraud, he's liable. You find him liable. I think dumb the burden down, make it very simple. Uh, need more dialogue about proof. Say that you've met your burden today. Uh, as far as the defense closing goes, you said something like his people were doing unethical things that weren't illegal. Um, that sounds really bad, yeah. um, in my <laughs> opinion. Um, and, then, and then I just wrote, are you admitting that people involved committed fraud uh, that were working for him? I don't know, that, that was it. And then you asked some question like, why would um, he go through all this uh, to win the election? Like, it's not my job to answer that question. It's your job to answer that question. Yeah, um, that's it. Good point. Adam. Okay, you two, uh, when was the press conference? We talked a lot about the lying, but remember when that press conference was? Of course, about it after the fact, it didn't affect the outcome of the election. It looked shady, but it did not affect the outcome. Um, and you need to come up with a better answer about that you lied. This is my private, personal life. Okay, if you were a public defender, I'm paying your salary. It is my business. So you need to come up with a better answer. Okay. 
Okay. Maisha, we kind of covered a little bit of that at lunch as far as shortening it up a little bit. Yeah, we gave away the fraud, so don't have to cover the fraud. You did very well with the, the law says once we admit that, we presume that. Okay, so we passed that. The bulk of your closing has got to be direct responsibility. Okay. All right, so let us oh. welcome our third judge. I mean, our. Use, use all your time. We had three minutes left on the clock for the defense closing. Oh, he stepped out. Is there a room for a I think there's one on that wall. There is. Um, judges, for the next.